address today. And number one, we have the characteristics of the cathode rays. These are also known as the properties of the cathode rays. Number two, we shall look at the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope. The uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope. So, to begin, uh, let us begin by looking at the properties of the cathode ray. And uh, when you look at the properties of the cathode ray, uh, first we shall go back and look at the thermionic emission. During the uh, process of thermionic emission, we usually have two circuits connected. One circuit is connected to the heater and another circuit is connected to the ammeter. Then the second circuit is connected with a gap and that gap is to be filled by the electrons or a beam of electrons moving from the cathode towards the anode. By filling that gap, then you can be able to record the values of the ammeter. So looking at the process of thermionic emission first, uh, the cathode is usually designed by a metal oxide. This is barium oxide. This is a metal that has a low work function. By introducing very high temperatures or heating this metal, after it has been connected to the negative terminal of a power source, then it is going to produce a beam of electrons. This beam of electrons are going to be accelerated towards the anode. Once this beam of electrons are accelerated towards the anode, they are focused on the screen at a point where they are going to form a bright spot. So, looking at some of the characteristics of this beam, this beam of electrons is what we call the cathode rays. What are some of the characteristics that they possess? Number one, they, uh, they travel in straight lines. They travel in straight line. So you can be able to see uh, through the diagrams that we had, uh, we also have the diagram there, that the beam of electrons from the cathode, from the cathode is traveling along a straight line in order to form a spot on the screen. So looking at the process here, after the process of thermionic emission takes place at the cathode, we have the uh, accelerating anode, which accelerates uh, this electron beam toward the screen. Then through the focusing anode, which also focuses the beam at a point on the screen so that the glowing effect can be seen in form of a bright spot. So this proves to us one of the characteristics uh, of the cathode rays that they travel in a straight line. Characteristic number two is that the cathode ray cause certain substances to glow. They cause certain substances to glow or florence. They cause certain substances to glow or florence. So this glowing effect can only happen when the beam of electrons, that is the cathode rays, uh, come into contact with the screen or the, with the fluorescent screen. Then we are going to have the glowing effect. And that is the character characteristics that we have number two or the second property of the cathode rays that they cause certain substances uh, to glow or florence. And this, is, uh, this can be evidence when we see the bright spot at the screen. Characteristics number three of the cathode rays is that the cathode rays possess charges. The cathode rays possess charges. Or in other words, we can also say that the cathode rays are charged. The cathode rays can be proved to be charged when uh, the process of thermionic emission takes place. First, the cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the power source. From the negative terminal of the power source, then this metal oxide will be able to produce electrons. The electrons or the beam of electrons are positively charged. This can also be proven by the law of charges when we see the electrons being accelerated by the anode. We have the accelerating anode and we also have the focusing anode. All these uh, anodes are used to accelerate the beam of electrons which are negatively charged from the cathode. So from the law of charges that like charges repel and unlike charges attract, then it can be seen 
that the negative electrons are attracted towards the, uh, the anode and this is enough evidence that uh, the uh, cathode rays possess charges or the cathode rays are charged. Looking at the next point, uh, also the property of cathode rays is that the cathode rays possess kinetic energy. The cathode rays possess kinetic energy. And if we, uh, we can be able to discuss the process of thermionic emission, at first the, switch, uh, the heater is switched on. After the heater is switched on, the rheostat is used to regulate the amount of current so that a lot of current is supplied at the heater. And at this point, the heater is going to release a lot of heat, which will increase the temperatures at the cathode. Very high temperatures at the cathode will make the electrons from the nuclear to break loose and start moving or accelerating towards the anode. Therefore, for these electrons to break loose from the nuclear, they must gain the energy. And this is the kinetic energy in which they possess. So this is an evidence for the property number four of the cathode rays, that the cathode rays possess kinetic energy. Lastly, number five, lastly, number five, they can produce X-rays when suddenly stopped by a metal target. Cathode rays can produce X-rays when suddenly stopped by a metal target. So uh, this cathode ray oscilloscope is a sample that was used uh, to produce the cathode ray tube. So an improvement of the same uh, has been used to uh, produce the X-rays. This because when a beam of electrons from the cathode produced through the process of thermionic emission are suddenly stopped by a metal target, then they are going to produce X-rays. And this is uh, the fifth characteristics of the cathode rays. So just, just a summary of the characteristics. Number one, they travel in a straight line. Number two, they cause certain substances to glow. Number three, they are charged or they possess charges. Number four, they possess kinetic energy. And lastly, number five, they can produce X-rays when suddenly stopped by a metal target. After looking at uh, the characteristics of the cathode rays, we can go through the diagram so that we can see how the diagram operates for us to get uh, the glowing effect on the screen. So looking at the diagram, it is made up of the heater. The heater is connected to the heating circuit and the purpose of the heater is to provide the high temperatures at the cathode. We also have the cathode on the heater. The cathode should be a metal oxide that is made of barium or strontium oxide. These are metals that have a low work function. And the purpose of this is that metals with very, uh, with very low work functions are adapted to conditions under high temperature. We also have the accelerating anode. After the accelerating anode, uh, this accelerating anode is just used to accelerate electrons towards the screen. We also have the focusing anode that is used to focus electrons at a point on the screen. We also have um, uh, the grid. The grid is, uh, that is between the accelerating anode and the cathode. When you look at the grid, it is also connected to the negative terminal. This grid is also made to be less negative than the cathode. Applying the law of charges, the grid is charged negative or it's connected to, be, uh, to the negative terminal so that it becomes less negative than the cathode and the purpose is to regulate the beam of electrons towards the screen. So the main function of the grid, it is made less negative. That is the adaptation to regulate the beam of electrons towards the screen. So looking at that diagram, You'll also notice that the screen is also connected to the positive terminal, meaning that the screen uh, of the CRO is also positively charged. It is connected to the extra high tension voltage, and the purpose of the uh, one of the purposes of the screen uh, as to why it is connected to the positive terminal is to uh, accelerate electrons at a point. Is to accelerate electrons at a point. 
so that we have the bright spot being formed on the screen. So moving along, I want us to look at the parts of the CRO. What makes up the CRO? The CRO is made up of the following. Number one, we have the electron gun. The CRO is made up of the following. Number one, we have the electron gun. The electron gun is a group of other parts that make up the CRO, but joining them together, we call them the electron gun. So this electron gun is made up of, we have the cathode, we have the heater circuit, we have the accelerating anode, and the focusing anode. These parts uh, make up the electron gun. I repeat, we have the heating circuit, we have the cathode, we have the, we have the accelerating anode, and we also have uh, the focusing anode. All these parts combined together will give us the electron gun. Number two, we also have a system of plates. We call them the X plates and the Y plates. So we shall be looking at how this system of plates also operate so that we can have the electron beams being formed on the screen at different patterns. Number three, the CRO is also made up of an, an evacuated strong glass envelope. An evacuated strong glass envelope. This is just a glass envelope which is made up of a vacuum. And lastly, number four, uh, it has a fluorescent screen at one end of the glass envelope. So at the end of this glass envelope, we have a fluorescent screen. What is the purpose for us using the fluorescent screen? So we shall be looking at the functions of each and every part, starting with the electron gun, the system of deflecting plates, the evacuated strong glass envelope, and lastly, the fluorescent screen uh, that is also at the end of the glass envelope. So beginning with the electron gun, what is the purpose of the electron gun in the CRO? I began by saying that the electron gun is made up of certain parts. It is made up of the cathode, the heating circuit, the accelerating anode, and the focusing anode. So looking at these parts, the process of thermionic emission takes place within the electron gun. The process of thermionic emission takes place within the electron gun. Thermionic emission is the process by which the electrons gain energy, break loose from the force of attraction at the nuclear, and get accelerated towards the anode. That is how we define thermionic emission. So the main purpose of thermionic emission is to supply electrons. And that happens at the cathode, supplying electrons. The main purpose of us having the accelerating anode is to accelerate electrons and the main purpose of us having the focusing anode is to focus electrons at a point uh, or is to focus the beam of electrons at a point on the screen. Therefore, when we look at the, the general purpose of the electron gun, we can say that it is used to supply electrons accelerate them towards the screen and focus the beam at a point on the screen. It is used to supply electrons, accelerate them towards the screen and focus the beam at a point of the screen. So this is the purpose of the electron gun which combines the functions of both the cathode, the heating circuit and uh, the accelerating anode together with the focusing anode. After that, let us look at the grid. And together with me here, I have the image of the grid. So we shall be looking at the purpose of the grid. The purpose of the grid here, we are told that it is hollow. It is a hollow cylinder which is surrounding the cathode. It is a hollow cylinder which surrounds the cathode. So it is made hollow. And the purpose of it being made hollow, it is because uh, the space between or the space in that hollow cylinder is to allow the beam of electrons to be accelerated towards the anode. But the main purpose of this grid is to accelerate or is to regulate the beam of electrons towards the screen. It regulates the beam of electrons and therefore it is responsible for the intensity of the glowing effect that appears on the screen. So 
looking at the diagram, this diagram has a brighter knob. So the brighter knob has uh, plays a major role in, in ensuring that the screen appears either bright or dim. And for the screen to appear bright or dim, then this uh, the brighter knob plays a major role in controlling the intensity of the beam. So going back uh, to the purpose of the grid, we are told that it is a cylinder-like structure which surrounds the cathode and it is made to be relative, uh, it has a small relative potential to the cathode, meaning that it is made less negative than the cathode. And by being less negative and applying the law of charges, then it controls the intensity of the beam by being less negative. It controls the intensity of the beam by being less negative. So that is the purpose of the grid. So when we rotate the knob in a clockwise direction, the grid becomes more negative and therefore some electrons are repelled because like charges are going to repel and that is going to reduce the intensity uh, of the brightness on the screen. If you want to increase the brightness, then the grid is meant to be less negative. Few electrons are going to be... The few electrons are going... Uh, are going to repel towards the grid and therefore when you have very few electrons repelling then more of the electrons are going to be accelerated and therefore we are going to see a brighter spot on the screen so that is how the grid plays its role to ensure that uh, it regulates the intensity of the beam at the screen also looking at uh, the deflection system we have a lot to discuss about the deflection system because number one, the deflection system is made up of two types of plates. It is made up of the Y plates and the X plates. Though so we are going to name these types of plates in the deflection system in terms of the vertical deflection and horizontal deflection. So I want us to look at how the vertical deflection occurs and how the horizontal deflection occurs. So when we start by looking at the vertical deflection, we are saying that when the plates are not charged, the beam strikes at the center. So we have these uh, plates which are designed for vertical deflection on the screen. They provide a glowing effect which appears vertically on the screen. So for this glowing effect to appear vertical on the screen, then at some point, these plates will lose the charges. When they are not charged, they become neutral. By becoming neutral, it means that the, since the beam uh, or the cathode rays have one property which says that they travel along a straight line, then because uh, we are having these plates having no charge, then the bright spot is going to be formed at the center of the screen. The bright spot here is formed at the center because uh, the plates are not charged and therefore the beam of electrons are neither attracted or repelled. And in the process, we have uh, the, bright, uh, the beam of electrons passing through in a straight line and the bright spot is formed at the center. When the plates are positively charged or when they acquire positive polarity, then the beam of electrons are attracted towards the positive side and then the beam uh, the beam of electrons once they are attracted towards the positive side they are going to strike a point sideways on the screen at the other point these plates are also going to be to acquire the negative polarity when they acquire the negative polarities the beam of electrons which are also negatively charged are going to be repelled by the negative charged plates. By being repelled, it means that they're also going to be to strike at a point sideways on the screen. And as a result of the changing polarities on the plates, then we are going to have the vertical deflection appearing on the screen. So this is how the vertical deflection system operates by changing the polarities so that we can have the vertical deflection on the, or the glowing effect appearing on the screen. 
Apart from the vertical def uh, deflection, we also have the horizontal deflection, which also appears on the CRO. So how does the horizontal deflection occurs? First, we have uh, the beam of electrons passing through the horizontal plates. And at this point, the horizontal plates having no charge, then the property of cathode rays will apply that these cathode rays are going to travel along a straight line. And the bright, uh, the bright spot is going to be formed at a point on the center of the screen. Looking at the other point now, when the beam of electrons are positively charged, these electrons are going to be attracted towards the positively charged plates. And as a result of this positive polarity, they are going to be formed at a point above the center. On the other hand, these plates can acquire a negative polarity. And as a result of them acquiring a negative polarity, the electrons which are negatively charged are going to be repelled. And by them being repelled, then they are going to strike a point below the center. And as a result, we are going to have the horizontal deflection of the beam of electrons at the screen. And as a result of the vertical and horizontal deflection, then we can, ha we can have the glowing effect appearing at given patterns on the screen. So these are the purposes of the deflection system as other parts of the CRO. Another part of the CRO that we also have to discuss is the screen. And looking at another property that we also discussed, that is the property of the cathode rays, is that they cause certain substances to glow. Therefore, if they cause certain materials to, grow, to glow, this material that has a glowing effect when subjected to the beam of electrons should be used as the, uh, at the screen so that we can have the bright spot being formed. So the screen is usually designed of a material which has a glowing effect when it comes into contact with the beam of electrons. Usually the purpose of the screen, number one, when we are looking at the parts of the screen, you'll find out that the screen is connected to the positive terminal. This uh, is connected to the positive terminal so that it can be able to accelerate electrons or a beam of electrons which are negatively charged. Number two, the screen uh, is also used to conduct the electrons to the earth. The screen is also used to conduct the electrons to the earth. Remember that after the electrons come into contact with the screen, they are going to cause a glowing effect. A bright spot is going to appear on the screen and after there, these electrons are going to be conducted to the earth and the screen usually performs these functions. Number three, we have the shielding of the beam from external electric field. The shielding of the beam from external electric field. So we have a, one of, another property of this a cathode rays which says that the cathode rays possess charges. The cathode rays possess charges. And therefore, anything that possesses a charge in physics can be affected by both electric and magnetic fields. So, if uh, these cathode rays possess charges, then they can be affected by the electric and magnetic fields. Having been affected by electric and magnetic field, therefore they must be shielded from external electric fields. The external electric fields refers to the any other electric connection which is outside the CRO. Therefore, the screen plays a major role in shielding the beam of electrons that is from external electric field. So these are the three uses of the screen. In summary, they are used for conduction of electrons to the earth. Number two, we have said they are used to, uh, for shielding the beam from external electric fields. And number three, they are used for accelerating electrons towards the center, uh, to accelerating electrons towards the screen since it acts as the anode. So these are some of the uses uh, of the screen. Those are the three uses of the screen in which you can highlight at any point whenever you are asked 
uh, the functions of the screen in a CRO. Lastly, we shall finish by looking at the uses of the CRO itself. These are the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope. So what are some of the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope? Number one, it can measure large voltages without getting damaged. It can measure large voltages without getting damaged. So that is one use of the cathode ray oscilloscope. And this is also an advantage of the cathode ray oscilloscope over uh, the voltmeter because it has the ability to measure large vol uh, voltages without getting damaged. Number two, they can measure both direct and alternating voltages. The cathode ray oscilloscope can measure both direct and alternating voltages. So when we have uh, the direct voltages, it can still be measured by the CRO. When we have the alternating voltages, this can still be measured by the CRO. So that is the purpose number two of the CRO. Number three, it has infinite resistance and does not take any current. It, it has infinite resistance and does not take any current. This means that it does not interfere with the circuit. The cathode ray oscilloscope does not interfere with the circuit. And as a result, then it has infinite resistance and therefore does not take any current. So that is also an advantage over other instruments which are used uh, to measure voltages. Number four, which is the last one, we are told that it responds instantaneously. It responds instantaneously. Unlike ordinary meters or meet, uh, voltmeters, whose pointers swing around the correct reading due to inertia. So instant, uh, instant response are found when using the CRO. You can be able to find out that when using the voltmeter, we usually have so many challenges, especially in getting the correct reading because at some point we can have the pointer swinging around the correct value or the correct reading and at that point it becomes very difficult for us to be able to get the exact reading but now when you use the CRO or the cathode ray oscilloscope it gives instant response without uh, swinging around the correct reading so you can be asked to state the advantage of the CRO over other meters. Number one, it has instant response. Number two, it has infinite resistance and does not interfere with the circuit. Number three, it can measure both direct and alternating voltages. And lastly, number four, it can measure large voltages without getting damaged. So reaching at that point, uh, that marks the end of our lesson today. As you have been able to look at uh, some of the uses of the CRO, parts of the CRO, and how they are adapted to perform their functions. So uh, finally, I'll finish by looking at the little quiz. The little quiz uh, is simply the questions that we normally do every day so that you can be able to present your answer in the beginning of the coming lesson. And on our little quiz today, we are told state one advantage of using the cathode ray oscilloscope over voltmeter in measurement.